Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I am so glad to have you back checking out my thrift haul and makeover video. Yep, this is what today's video is all about. I will share with you what I found throughout the week of secondhand shopping at Goodwill, Salvation Army, and then I share the process at the end of the video with you all of what I do to the items to get them ready to resell. If there's any that I need to paint, to make over, I share the vision and the process with you all of what I do to those items. So I know that I shared earlier, which was a thrift with me video, which was loads of fun. I'm so happy that there's stuff on up on the shelves that I can share what's on the shelves and go thrifting multiple places. So that kind of lessened the haul of what I show you. But those, any of the things in that video that I had to make over, I will share in this video of being made over. So let's get right into this, this haul. So let's see, for $2.29, I came across a box of what I consider to be vintage dominoes. I just have something about things when they're old and they're sun bleached. I just think these would look really cool. A reason to buy some clear glass and just put them in a jar, just in a bowl, just some shelf sitters, just, you know, I can see grandkids, kids coming and just, even if they're not playing dominoes, just playing with these to make little log houses. And I just thought that was a great find. These are the ones I remember playing with as a kid. I know now they're more of the hard resin, almost like a marble-like. So I definitely did not pass these up because I just, I really like old things. So for $2.29, that was a great deal. Of course, my son wishes it was the cards that were in here, but. <laughs> Anyway, so let me see. So going on some good price things. I got a set of these wooden bowls. Now I love wooden bowls. These are in great condition. They've got those different tones, um, a walnut maybe, I don't know. So they were hand turned. Um, they, are, they say walnut in 2009. This one doesn't have a date nor does this one but they were the three of them for $3.29 and I don't need to do anything to this this is just a nice little cubby um oops, I took the receipt this is just a nice little cubby catch-all you know just an accent um I I think wood is definitely an accent color that's how I decorate my house so I kind of buy what I like so I thought these were beautiful bowls and I don't need to do anything to them. Now at the $3.29 price tag, I think I think I can get five, six, seven dollars a piece for them. They're just small little bowls. So I'll put one in at a time, not to go crazy and have some little bit in my inventory. So I thought that was great. Uh, for $4.29, I picked up this was a set of three little, just the little new chalkboards. I have a plan for these. Um, won't be in this video, it'll be an upcoming video of um, doing some makeovers and I definitely wanted to grab these because I actually had a vision for some chalkboards. So it was nice that there was a set of three and $4.29. I don't know if that's a great price or not a good price, but I, I felt as it was. And for $5.29, I picked up this beautiful duck. Look at it, he's got a brass beak. Um, the felt's fallen off, but I can re um, I can re glue that. I'm not going to paint this one. Um, it, it's in great condition. It's a it's beautiful. So this is not one of them that I would paint up. I will just fix that felt on the bottom and see if somebody wants him. Especially with this beautiful beak. Oh, that brass beak is beautiful. Now these little guys were a new purchase good. Target, I think the dollar spot, and they were just for 99 cents. They were a little salt and pepper shaker bunnies. It probably stuff that didn't sell in the Target dollar spot, but for 99 cents, I don't know if I'll hoard on to them until next Easter. I think bunnies are kind of a year round thing, so I might put them in, you know, see if I paid 99, probably five bucks. They're, they're a bigger size, but 
you just never know. Because they're a bigger size, they might be a little bit harder of a sell. And then for $2.29, I picked up this black pottery little butt vase. It's signed. It's, oh, uh, I don't see a date, but it is, it is signed. So $2.29, I, pottery's, and pottery's still selling for me. So there goes Squirrel. There's always a cat in my video, isn't there? No matter where I sit. So yes, I, I loved that find. And then I also found this vase. Um, this one was $4.29. Uh, I had a different sticker on underneath. Does anybody recognize that sticker? Just some blown glass. So it's got all that in with it. Just that beautiful sky blue. There is, no, there's, I thought there was a chip, but there's not a chip. It's just how it was when they pulled it from being made. Um, just a manufacturer's defect. I like that little hint of the yellow in there. So it definitely gives it that it was hand blown. So yeah, um, yeah, this is a piece that my son could have done, but um, I actually pick up some of these hand-blown ones myself and the green pair I got not too long ago, those have already sold one by one. And then the black one hasn't sold yet, but yeah, we, there's still time. And for $3.29, I did pick up another one of these pictures for my collection. This is my classic look that I love. Um, it's got a little stamp on the bottom. I love these little pictures. I love this little shape of a picture. I could probably do a whole shelf of the shape. I kind of try to mix them in so I, I don't look so collectible, collectible, but I can't help myself. And then for $3.29, I know it's nothing excited. It's a first aid box. And we do have a first aid kit that's plastic in our shop, but one of those look cooler, it, you know, in case you need a Band-Aid, things happen in the shop. So Chris was actually with me when I'm like, hey, do you want to upgrade what we have? Because this looks nicer and he liked it that it could hang somewhere. So you, you try to leave your workspace as clear as you can to work on things. So a first aid kit, it should, you know, our house is not as close to our workshop as we'd like it to be. So you may need something. And then for $4.29, I picked up this beautiful, now it's just resin, it's not carved. I just, I, I thought it was beautiful. So, you know, it's one of those things, you know, when you know. So uh, yeah, nothing to do to him. He's just a nice little hang somewhere. Um, oh, there's a signature Bach Eve. I don't know if you can see that Bach Eve. I think that's what it says. I'm, that's what I'm going for. But yes, kind of reminds me of Santa. Kind of looks like Santa, so I liked it. And then for $2.29, it was just this little airplane, but he had the rusty little spring. I like to plain paint paint him up and just make him look more plain. I know that sounds boring, but I think it's just, there's just something about making something look old and chippy, especially with their rusty coil. And then the little, I can take these off. They're just nailed on the little, uh, one of the propellers are just nailed on just to paint it up and give it a little bit more of an antique look. That way you can have it all year long. It doesn't just have to be like a Christmas. Maybe this was a Christmas ornament. And then talking about wood things, it was a, it was this bag and the bag was, I think it was like 49 cents at the Salvation Army, <laughs> but it was a whole bunch of wooden bowling pins and I cannot pass up wooden bowling pins. How many, let me think, see if I can do quick math. There's nine, <laughs> nine bowling pins. So yeah, I just, so I could leave them as is and let them age or I could age them or I could just put them in a bowl. I, I don't know. I just I have a problem with wood and I just can't pass it up, especially when $49.99, I can't remember, but they were really cheap. And then I did pick up a couple more birds. So for $2.29, we got this bird. Now you all have asked uh, in the videos how the patina is selling. Now the patina on birds, I can't keep birds when I do the patina on it. I have a couple odds and ends of the patina that has sold. Not as fast as I'd like it to sell, so I'm going to have to slow down. But on the birds, I can do it because it's so much fun to do. And then I did get this for $4.29. It's another bird. Uh, yeah, so I get, I get to paint two birds. <laughs> so um, this was a Sears. Yeah, it's got a Sears tag on it. So yeah. 
So I was happy about that. And crosses. Now I have this cross. And this was $4.29. It was a Kohl's, just a resin piece. The crosses in the patina have sold too, so I feel like I can keep on doing that. I really, the shelf sitting crosses sell better than the hanging crosses, even though they do sell. Um, and this is a good size one. So even when I wiped distressed um, crosses, they when they stood up, they, they sold too. So crosses still, I think, year round sell. And then I know this that this is a necklace and a ring and earring holder, but it was birds, $4.29. Um, it's I don't know if it'll clean up well or if I get to paint it or not, but anything with birds sells, so we can do we can go ahead and do that too. And this is just a outdoor blown glass. I love blown glass. It's got copper. Can you see the copper on the bottom? You don't feel it. At first I thought it was some type of a feeder, like a hummingbird feeder, and then I probably would have stayed away because the hummingbirds really don't like them. I've hung them and my hummingbirds are like, no, I just like that plastic one that you had the little sit thing on so I can sit and rest and take a drink. I bought all the fancy ones and redonated them because the hummingbirds in my area, they want just the plain and simple. So I thought this was gorgeous with that copper on there so and it's even got a little bit of, oh let me see i don't want to drop it it's even got a little bit of age going on so do i have any gnome fans out there so uh there was i'm always looking at the coffee mugs and here was this he's probably was probably for christmas but 229 a gnome coffee mug it was an ltd um pro, like i said i think probably for christmas but gnomes do really well um so I, whether I'll hold it on into Christmas or if I have a display I can do because I always kind of like try to do displays in our booth so we'll see if I just hoard on to them because LTD I don't think it's something I'm gonna run across very often so for $6.29 oh, look at these these are huge so I was like I was surprised because some of the prices have been going crazy um, so this was a good, I mean, they're huge. I can put pieces of wood on them. I'm not sure if I have any big ones left. Oh no, another trip to, well, Joanne's, because Joanne's is cheaper actually than Hobby Lobby for wood rounds, y'all. Unless you can cut them, you can cut them, but um, yeah. So yeah, they were, said they were $29 a piece. They're wood, so we'll get these all done up and then for 629 it was it's a dress form it's it's got fabric on it and unfortunately the base is a little bit on the loose side um somebody tried to fix it i don't want to spend a ton of time on it i think i'll just leave it as wonky as it is a little bit because once you sit it it doesn't stop it from doing but in that last video, when I did that little necklace dress form to look antique and vintage, I, I couldn't walk away from this one because I absolutely loved how that one turned out and then I have a bigger one to work on and try that same kind of technique on. Um, like Chris said, I have to be careful because just because I want to play, I still want to resell it. So yeah, it, I don't know because it's really glued. I, I don't know. Um, I think I'll just... I always say that, but then my OCD or my whatever you want to call it, perfectionist gets the better of me. But it's wood, so we'll see what I can do to it. So, but it stands. That isn't affecting anything of it. That it, you know, you can move it back and forth. So, I think there's worse things in life. Then I think, oh, five twenty nine was this? This was a. It needs tightened somehow. Probably some JB Weld because I don't, that's not tightening it up. It just keeps spinning. Um, but it works. It's just a nice, nice clock. So I don't think I would do anything up, up to it other than just help it along and get some. Um, I think I can tighten it up from the bottom and not have to worry about anybody seeing it. That way it doesn't feel like it's wonky. I mean, if worse comes to worse and I couldn't get it to look, I could just tape off. Um, and just hand paint the bottom with some Waverly ink and seal that in too. Black would definitely, it's clicking away. It's a very noisy clock. <laughs> some clocks are noisier than others. Do so you notice that? So yeah, you know, that's probably, there you go. That's probably bent more than it should be. So yeah, I might need to help that along a little bit. Looks like that's been bent, but definitely it's been keeping time. So for 4.29, I did give this card bowl 
Um, I think this is a neat piece. So nothing I need to do to this. I mean, I could put white wax on it and make it pop more, but you know, sometimes you just need to leave good enough alone. There's some a signature or initials, AG on the bottom. So yeah, I'll just leave it as is. It's $12 probably on it. That's not too bad. Then I did find one more or one more thing and it's a, a set of canisters. It's just these, these type of can, somebody put some, they really didn't, were worried about something getting scratched. So these are those nice canisters. They have a nice seal. The lids have some damage. The lids need to be repainted. And then there was this size, same thing. I need to wash it, get those felt off. And then yeah, just repaint the top. And I'll just do the labels. Those labels sold really well that I got off of Etsy. So that's not a too hard of a fix. So yes, that is everything I found when I was out thrifting this week. Some weeks it's a ton, some weeks it's little, um, but I have been getting ready for a garage sale. So I've been a little bit more, uh, you know, not buying so much. And so that video should air after this one of how our garage sale and prepping for it and what I do to get ready for a sale. Now it's not a home sale, it's a garage sale. So yes, so that is it for the haul. So let's get into making over some of these items. Well, first things first, I need to get these felt pads off the bottom of these jars. So some simple Dawn dish soap and some extreme hot water. Let them sit for a little bit. Not only will get that label off, will help me so I can get these felt pads off. So yep, right off the bat, they come right off just after a little bit of soaking. I've used these labels in the past. They were purchased off of Etsy. I'll hopefully I'll remember to link them down below. You could do a black outline or you can do a white outline, which is what I, I usually like to do. And then after I just get it from my files on my computer, I copy and paste it into my Excel program. That way I can size it to which item I need to print it out for. And then after printing it out, I just cut it to the size. I just, I don't cut to the black line. I cut a little bit around the white just to leave a little bit. So in case I my cuts are completely straight, you don't notice it so much. To attach the label, I'm just using Mod Podge. So I'm just putting a nice thin coat on the back and then attaching it to the jar itself. Then I'll let that dry. And then after that dries, I'll put one more sealant coat of the Mod Podge and we should be good to go. Should be hand washed, not immersed, or if you, unless you want to take the label off. But other than that, these are pretty simple. I'm not going to antique this one. I have two of them. I cut a pretty straight line so I don't feel like I I need to antique around those edges but they are just cute i kept them simple one treat and one snack and then after getting the lids all cleaned up i don't have to worry about the bottoms they're black i just need to make sure that i get any residue off the top of these that i can so my paint will adhere properly and now i'm just going to spray paint them with the rust-oleum paint and primer in the flat black and I'll actually go ahead and give these two coats because the chips on them are a little bit deeper. It's not quite just flat. So these actually will need two coats to cover that up. And to protect and seal in that paint, I'll be sealing it in with some polycrylic. And I either go back from the matte or the satin finish, just whatever I can find. So this calendar is one that I found with the thrift with me, and this should have just been a simple take the tape off, distress the edges, give it a little bit more of an updated look, but oh my goodness, does anybody else struggle with some of the packing tape that the thrift stores put on? I know that they need want to keep them all together, but oh, some, uh, some packing tape just will not come off, and this was definitely one of them. 
So it left a sticky residue <laughs> residue behind, which made a lot more work for what I considered to be an easiest flip. A lot of times when I'm doing my items for you, that's how I start off, which is ones that are really easy to the ones I think are a little bit more difficult. <laughs> I guess this one should have been in the difficult line because after I got all the retape removed, then I had to go back in with Goo Gone and get all the sticky residue off. So I'm glad this isn't a piece that I was going to be painting because I really don't like to use Goo Gone or any oil on an item that I'm going to be painting, but sometimes you just can't help it that you need to get that sticky residue off. I'm always afraid I'm not going to get the oil off properly and all the way that it's going to be left behind when I'm painting <laughs> and then the paint won't adhere properly. So luckily these were just items that just needed to be distressed on the edges. So just getting that Goo Gone off and then I'm going to take some sand paper to those edges. Here's another piece that I found with my thrift with me that I didn't pick up the first round, but it was there at the second round at my local Goodwill, and I'm happy that it did because I really love how this one turned out. So this is just raw wood. It's not sealed in by any means. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to give it a couple coats of polycrylic to fill in that extremely dry wood. I'm glad that this was in wonderful condition because a lot of times when you find a raw wood it has had a little bit of water damage, it's been stained up somehow, but sealing it in with polycrylic will protect that from happening. So now my next step for this piece is the drawers have that really raw, just it needs to be filled in with something. It's just that type of wood that that would just take a lot of poly acrylic to make that nice and smooth. So I wanted to actually bring out the drawers details. And what I did was mix up some of the natural wax. I used the Verithane clear wax with a little bit of Waverly white paint because I want it to be really white. So I just mixed a little bit of ratio till it looked white enough to me. And now I'm just going to paint it on the drawer edges and on the front and it's just going to get into those little detailed crevices and give it a little kind of an aged look but with a white look and then I'm also going to do the body of the drawer holder itself only just to blend it all in I don't know if it'll grab as much as what the little drawers were but I want to tie the two pieces together and then I did wax all my pieces first in the hopes that it'll kind of sink into those little areas. See how those areas just suck that wax right in and now I'm wiping it off from the face. I just want that detail to pop. Remember, you can always use the natural, the clear wax as an eraser if you can't get as much off as you want or you made a mistake. I always have that on hand now for my, I call it my eraser. But wait, I think I can do better than that. I think that I let that dry overnight and I just wasn't totally in love with it. So I went into my stash and I started to look to see what I had to make it a little bit better. And I actually needed, needed I've been looking for a project to use these beautiful IOD transfers on that Vonda from Painted Heirloom had set me up with. So I'll link those down below. We are coming into flower season. Oh my goodness, are they just not gorgeous so even though it's not going to be the easiest of thing to transfer this onto this box i let that wax dry overnight now i'm going to cut this into six so it fits these little drawers and nope i can't take the knobs off i didn't say this was going to be an easy project but oh i think it is going to turn out beautiful just a little more added something to accentuate that wax My 
my mind when I was doing this, I thought, oh, I can just use my X-Acto knife and go around the knob as I'm applying it, like I do the decoupage paper, but um, um, the, <laughs> yeah, the outer of the transfer is a little bit on the stronger side, so you need to cut it with scissors. So, you know, I was learning how to help <laughs> each one of these drawers gets easier and easier to apply because you learn, I'm a learn as go you go kind of person. And I know that there's a little bit of a missing edge but i know that i'll have some extra extra in that lighter cover to cover it up we want it to look old and distressed and so that's i will be using it like that so the knobs were not the easiest but it doesn't need to be perfect it is that perfectly imperfect of taking an item from a thrift store and making it into something new after I got them all applied and moved anything where I needed it to be moved if I could, I just took some sandpaper, made sure it was nice and distressed, and now I'm just going to go ahead and seal that transfer in with some polycrylic. So now uh, there are these a set of four bowls that I picked up with the second round of the thrift with me at my local Goodwill. So I'm just going to give them a light sanding. There's a little bit of a top coat on that some of it has wore off, but I want to kind of leave that there. I just need to open up what top coat's there because I kind of want my next step to um, accentuate those little marks in there. For these bowls, I wanted, I needed to be a little bit more creamy because I did not seal these in with the polycrylic like I did the first one. So I'm going to go ahead and use the Waverly White Wax, which is a little bit on the creamier side. It's not as white as we all would like it to be. So I'm going to add a little bit of the Waverly White paint until visually it looks like the white that I'm looking for to rub on this entire bowl. This is one of those times you got to trust that process. So I knew with the paint that it was really going to grab into that raw wood. So there I am with my natural Verithane wax to use as an eraser. I wanted it. That's why I didn't want to get all that top coat off on the inside. I wanted some of that wax to seep into the natural wood just like it is on that outer. So now I'm just taking that to wipe it off. A couple, dip, one rag to wipe on, one wet rag to wipe off. That white wax alone just totally transformed these just plain and simple bowls into something beautiful. Now I'm going to seal that in with some polycrylic. Yep, this was a case I could do better too. Oh goodness. So yes, I'm testing out to see if these transfers will... Oh, did, oh my gosh, they are just gorgeous in these little bowls. It was like there's two flowers in this that just fit these bowls perfect. Now you definitely have to hold the thumb down and then get it started with just my fingernail before I can go on to the rubbing tool because of course with that harder plastic it wants to pop up. So good thing I'm able to use both of my hands at the same time.
Well, I had two of the transfers that fit the bottom perfectly fill, filled up the whole bowl, but then I used a couple of the smaller flower ones, and then there's a couple other little smaller pieces that I'm just going to, let's say, bling up these with. So I'm just filling in that dead space with all these other beautiful, oh my, they are just absolutely beautiful. The white wax, God wink moment is just, the two is, are just going together beautifully. <music> After I got it the way that I wanted it, as you saw, I cut a couple of them into halves to have it fit the bowl, which is working out wonderfully. Now I'm just taking a little bit of sandpaper, anything that wasn't attached, or just giving a little bit of age. There's one that I didn't realize wasn't attached when I went to sand it, so it's got a little bit bigger chunk out, but it's that perfectly imperfect. <laughs> the chunk's gone now. You just have to leave it alone and move on. After getting them blown out <laughs> and we're going to seal that those transfers in with some polycrylic also What can we do with this little plane? Well, first I'm gonna go ahead and take off its little propellers, just so using some needle nope pliers and trying to grab onto them. So the spring is good and attached, so I'm just gonna go ahead and tape that off to protect it. I like that color of that spring before proceeding to clean the wood of the piece. After getting this little plane all painted up with the same spray paint I used previously, sealed in with some polycrylic, and now after that's dry, I'm going to take some sandpaper and distress all the sharp edges of this plane. And then I'm going to take some fine grit seal wool over the entire piece that helps open up that polycrylic because then I'm gonna move on to some antiquing wax to just richen up that black paint and pop those areas that I distressed. And now I'm gonna go ahead and reattach those little propellers. And there's a little piece of round wood that held the propeller on in front of the nail. So it should be easy enough to put back on. So the bottom of this did not come clean. It there's some kind of a staining happening. I'm sure it's not it's not real brass. It's just that brass pl plated. So after getting it cleaned up and letting it dry, I'm gonna give it a good coating of the rust oleum paint on both sides, all little angles. These are one of those objects you have to flip over on the one side and then flip over on the other side and then get the bottom of it <laughs> before moving on to seal it in with the polycrylic. So now what can I do with this? So I really am liking that natural with a little bit of the white Waverly paint in it. So I'm going to go ahead and there's some details in the bark area that I'm going to try accentuating with a little bit of a white wax. So I love how the white wax is just kind of hanging out on the branches, but I want to pop my birds a little bit. The wax didn't really stay in their details very much, so I'm just taking some of the rub and buff and the gold and just painting it on those birds. And once I started doing that, I knew I was in love. Oh yes, we're going to be doing some patinas, but first I always have to get those objects all cleaned up. It's that 
not very fun but has to be done kind of prep work but taking the tags off isn't always the easiest and I just use a heat gun especially on metals or resin that they seem to stick the most on wood they don't are usually aren't too bad unless it's that packing tape <laughs> from the thrift store but yep just heated these up to reactivate that sticky and I just have the heat gun I use a lot is just a stamping up one that I had for I've had for years since I used to card make and scrapbook and then just love this little um, scraping tool it is my go-to tool even though I got it really cheap at Harbor Freight, I do link the one on Amazon because Harbor Freight doesn't seem to have them anymore. Now I'm on to popping the details of this cross. Now, the patinas that I purchased, I purchased us all off of Amazon one by one. I don't want you to think that it, and they're a little bit of investment. As you see, though, a little bit goes a long way. So this is going to last me a long time, especially since I'm just using a Dollar Tree stencil brush to apply it. It is definitely a dry brush. It doesn't take a little bit goes a long way. And I like to start off with this bright color first. I've never watched any videos of anybody doing this. I probably should, but I'm just teaching myself to what my eye likes as I go along. So I start off with the brightest one first. And then I move on to the rust color and these are made to be layered so you can separate them or you can layer them and then you can blend them together. So right off the bat, you could tell how it just, oh, I already, I already love it. Finally did complete the set by purchasing the brown one. So let's see what this does. So you got those three colors playing on each other. And as a retired hairdresser of 31 years, I know how three colors go very well together. Even though this is not one of the redesigned ones, I love this little, this actually accelerates, changes a little bit of color, but makes the details after I've laid everything all on and blended it the way I want, just pop just a little bit more. Sometimes I use this one, sometimes I use the silver wax by this company, but I do link them all down below in my Amazon store. My last one that I'm layering on is the rust color, and I really noticed that as this oxidates, that this gives that aged greenish look, so I just like to top it off, and it really doesn't take me much time to do all this, just layering on, yes, when they're all still wet. And I find that it does not come off very well, so depending on what item you're doing, if you wanted to seal it in or not, but for the cross, I think the way that it's going to be touched, it didn't need to be sealed in. So next we have these birds, and I really like this one on the stand. That is such a neat find. And so far, the patina birds have sold really well. I put them in, and then they're gone. So, yep, I'm not going to pass up birds if they're cost-efficient for me to make over. And I usually will sell between $12 and $14. I might go a little bit more on the one on the stand. <music> of these birds that I think let's try something a little bit different since I do have that third color now of the brown and I'm going to go ahead and separate the colors a little bit more in the past I've done a lot of just really blendy to be on the safe side but now that I have that third blending color I'm going to go in with more splotches and see how I blend them in so don't think of splotches as being a bad word though Now that I have all three colors on, I'm just taking the brush, the blue brush, as you see, as soon as I start to mix that, you kind of get that greenish color, and that's what's going to blend this all together. And if you need to put a little bit more on the brush, I will, but you just keep blending until you're 
in love with what you are doing. So now on this one, I'm going to try a little bit different. I'm going to start off with the brown first and then layer it from there. I pretty much covered it completely with the brown and the rust and now I'm just going in with some of the splotches of that aquily blue color but as you see as you apply it it turns into that greenest age so this is just another I'm just kind of playing with them seeing it's I've done enough I know that as long as they're still wet you can just keep working with it until you love it For these because there's so much texture on them and that's a ceramic that is just sitting on there i do like to seal them in with polycrylic and let them cure Now I have these candlesticks and I, I've washed them, I've cleaned them, I made sure there wasn't any wax on them and I'm using Dixie's Bells drop cloth and no, I did not undercoat these in black. I think the Dixie Bell is a wonderful product and it's not going to come off so I don't need any primer for this, I just need to coat these. After my first coat is dry, I do spritz it with some Mr. Bottle, some water, before moving on to my second coat. So I'm going and flipping them upside down because I want to make sure that I get that bottom. That bottom doesn't look the best, so I want to be able to touch that up too. I'm going to go ahead and seal that Dixie Bell drop cloth paint in with polycrylic. Now my smaller piece candlesticks were my tester pieces so I felt that they painted up real well I did not yep I did not undercoat these in the black I'm not trying to cover up a color I feel as if these are wood so it's the paint is going to soak into these that's a lot of the reasons why things get undercoat in black is to cover up is to need a primer but Dixie Bell doesn't really need a primer, I don't find, and I don't plan on distressing this, and if it does distress, it's that beautiful brown color that you'll see from underneath. Now, when it came to the second coat on the bigger candlesticks, the same thing, Mr. Bottle, put that second coat on. But when it comes to the bottom, I decided that the bottom was already black originally. So I'm just going to touch it up with a little bit of the Waverly ink paint to make sure that it's nice and clean before sealing it in with the polycrylic.
Okay, so I'm using my smaller candle pe candlesticks as my tester piece again. Do you remember last week when I did the necklace holder dress form and I used the drop cloth color on it and then did the water down, my water down version of the antiquing wax on top of it? So that is what I'm going to be doing on these smaller candlesticks to see how this turns out. I toyed with the idea of taking and stripping off the finish and making these natural, but I thought, you know, to cottage core them up a little bit lighter, doing this drop cloth and some of the antiquing wax is a beautiful color together. So I'm testing that out first. Now my watered down version is the pickle jar full of water, but I have a quarter cup of antiquing wax by Waverly in it with a spoonful of the ink chalk paint. It just takes a little bit more of that reddish out. And then after I get them where I love them, I will seal that in with polycrylic. So well, I really loved that a little bit of age the antiquing wax gave to the smaller candlestick, so I'm comfortable moving on to my big guys. So just rubbing that on now. There's two different ways. If I would not have polycrylic it in first, it probably would have went a little bit darker, but it, you might have chanced rubbing some of the paint off with the watered down version. So it's just a look that you're going for. But I have one more step I want to do to these after getting that antiquing wax on. Yes, I don't think these could have been any more of a perfect fit. So sometimes I don't always like what the top of a candlestick looks like. Um, so these were a perfect fit. Those are those coasters that I bought from Hobby Lobby when I was looking for wood rounds. So I'm going to use some of the watered down antiquing wax to darken them up to make them match. And then after they dry, we'll go ahead and glue them on. My last project of this video, yep, is this dress form. Nope, I decided not to mess with tightening. I'd probably make more problems than it was worth. But now I'm using some of that Dixie Belle again in the drop cloth. And I'm hoping that I have some <laughs> enough to finish up. There's really not that much in the bottom of this, but... I think a little bit goes a long way, especially since you can water it down on that second coat with the Mr. Bottle. And now this is a fabric, and so I really need to fill in the fabric. So I'm loving on this Zinzer, Zinzer Zizzer brush. I, you know, I slaughter words, you all. So, but these are, I do like this brush. It holds a lot of paint and gets it on nice and smooth with those soft bristles. <laughs>
Now for the added detail on this piece, I'm going in to my Pinterest. I have some saved images that are reverse because I'm going to go ahead and be printing on waxed paper. So I copied that image, put it into my Excel program so I can size it appropriate to the space that I have on the bust of that form. I got my measurements here so I know what size I need it to make it. And so I'm just going to size it appropriate and then we're going to cut off some wax paper. I'm going to stick it to a piece of card stop with double stick tape to run it through my printer. I like to hold on to my paper as the copier is grabbing it so that it doesn't go, go ahead and slide off or mess up the paper. Just, <laughs> yeah, sometimes that happens. So now my ink is really wet on the wax paper, so I just brought my form in with me so I have a quick transfer. So and this is as quick as it gets. I don't even tape it or anything. I just start rubbing on that wet ink in the hopes that I don't slide off and make a blurred image. And no, this one is not going to transfer dark and crisp, but I don't want it to. I want it to look aged and then seal it that in after that dries with some polycrylic. So thank you so much for watching today's video and as always give me a comment down below of what item I made over was your favorite and if there was any that I just thrifted and just got it ready to resell was your favorite. So and as always thank you for being part of our YouTube family and if you're new and you're checking out our content for the first time and you liked what you saw please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video and we will see you next time guys and you can see what we're up to. Bye!